Okay, so now we're going to talk about the auditory system. We're going to talk about hearing. And when we talk about hearing, the whole deal here is communication. We're verbal uh, animals. We, we socialize a lot through language, through producing language and understanding others' language. That is our main, that is a main component of our interaction. And um, just as we saw with, with vision, we, we may have, there may be visual illusions that we are tricked by, but we're not tricked by a person's facial expression for the most part, and we're not tricked by, um, by movement, uh, our interpretation of movement. The auditory system, it may be tricked. There are auditory illusions. Uh, we, can dis well, we may discuss one of them, but uh, despite these auditory illusions, the auditory system is good enough for speech and communication, and that's really what it's built for. It's optimized for, the, uh, for communication through verbal speech. There are a, the, the number of people that are deaf or hard of hearing is far, far greater than the number of people that are blind. And I, I want to share uh, a, a couple of um, famous people's uh, takes on this. The, the first comes from Beethoven. This is a letter that he wrote uh, to his brothers. And in it, he says, uh, my for misfortune is doubly painful to me in that I am foredoomed to be misunderstood. Not for me the invigorating company of my fellow man, the refinements of conversation, the mutual outpourings of human sentiment. I am utterly alone. I am utterly alone and can mingle with society only as much as the barest necessity dictates. Condemned to the life of an exile. I do not even approach a group of people. So this shows you the incredible socially isolating effect of a loss of hearing. And, and Beethoven obviously wanted to hear the flutes. He wanted to hear his orchestra. He wanted to hear his music played. But what does he complain about? He complains about being socially isolated from others. Being deaf is, uh, is problematic because of the socially isolating consequences. Helen Keller, who was both deaf and blind, said straight out, deafness is worse than blindness. In her opinion, deafness was worse than blindness. Why is it worse? Because it, it impacts a person's social, uh, social ability. Now, the impact of deafness or hard of hearing depends on a number of factors. The number one factor that it depends on is when that deafness occurs, whether it occurs prelingually or postlingually. And um, uh, there are other factors that also, uh, that, that also are very important in, in understanding a person's reaction to losing hearing or to, to deafness. Um, and I just want to show you, here are a number of books I, 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 I cannot um, just tell you that uh, I, I want to recommend all these books. Let me put it that way. Uh, I, I just want to highlight a few th things that are outlined in these books. Uh, first, uh, David Wright is a, is a poet. He's an English poet who uh, lost his hearing at the age of seven. And uh, and so he had high quality speech until he was seven, and then he lost his hearing. So he was able to communicate, and he ended up being uh, raised in the, in the oral tradition, so he could lip read. In fact, when he first went deaf, it was not clear that he, no one realized, he certainly didn't realize that he was deaf for months until one of his cousins was sitting with him uh, he was still recovering um, uh, from the, the virus that causes deafness. Uh, and the cousin was talking to him and all of a sudden covered his mouth. And David Wright realized that he couldn't hear anything. That he, but he was hearing using his eyes um, because he had lots of experience. Now, in, in contrast, Lou Anne Walker she is a hearing person, but her parents are deaf. Both of her parents are deaf, and, and deaf from the get-go uh, or from very early on. 
And so they were both in the signing tradition. Uh, they grew up signing, and their ability to talk is, uh, is very poor. Um, American Sign Language is not English in sign. It is a language that has really no relationship, any more relationship to English than, say, Greek does, um, or even a, a Chinese does, so a very, very uh, different language. Uh, different vocabulary, different syntax, et cetera. So um, it, one, of the, one of the interesting things is that people that grow up signing, um, they cannot, they, they're not going to write a book because they're not fluent in English. They're fluent in signing. They're fluent in, in a sign language. And so I think this, what I really like about Luann Walker's book, A Loss for Words, is that it gives you, I, I think, the best uh, window into uh, life as a person who does not speak English, who speaks sign language. Now, Rebuilt is a very interesting uh, story by a man named Michael Korost, and he had very poor hearing uh, from the age, he was born with poor hearing that was discovered around two or three when he was given his first hearing aids. He never had spectacular hearing, so he had poor quality hearing. And when he was about 30, he lost his hearing completely. So the, the poor hearing that he had went away completely. And at that point, he had, um, he had cochlear implants put in. The cochlear implants were able to, he was able to learn how to use them, but it was, he, as he describes it, he had to become an Olympic perceiver. He had to, it was as though he was doing, uh, competing in the Olympics for hearing perception. He had to really work at trying to figure out what the, this artificial uh, signal was telling him. Now, in contrast, uh, I, I don't have a book for this, but, um, uh, uh, a friend of mine who got a, uh, a, um, a cochlear implant are around the same age, but who had very good hearing up until the time he was in his early 20s. Uh, when he turned on that cochlear implant, it was almost instantaneous that he could use it easily. And so what's the difference between Michael Koros and my friend? The difference is the quality of hearing beforehand. And this is really highlighted in Oliver Sacks' book, Seeing Voices, which tells you how important it is that, a, that an individual learn how to communicate. And ideally, and in most of us, we learn how to communicate through speech. But if speech, uh, if verbal communication is not possible because an individual is born deaf, they need to have the avenue to learn a form of communication. They need to find, uh, they need to be taught, enabled to, to find sign language, to, to be taught sign language, to communicate by sign language. So to rob people of, of communication is to, is to rob them of, of, uh, of the essence of, of one of the deep essences of life. Um, uh, it's absolutely necessary that um, individuals are taught how to communicate one way or another. Um, and uh, What's That Pig Outdoors is another really spectacular uh, memoir from a person who was brought up in the oralist tradition. And I finally want to talk uh, about this um, by a book called Misconnections by Barbara Senrost. This is the, the one book here that talks about an older person who, who loses their hearing. So presbyacusis, older hearing, is something that, um, that, that happens to uh, everybody, uh, or not to everybody, that happens to many people. We, we lose hearing as we age. And the, at that point, are you gonna, even if you went deaf at say 60, or 70, are you gonna go learn sign language? Well, it's a lot more difficult at 60 or 70 to learn sign language than it is at zero. So that's not typically available to these individuals. What is available is are, are, are these um, hearing aids that are getting better, but they're not, they're not as good as our, our, um, the system that we're born with. 
And uh, the frustrating bit of being misunderstood and, and um, infantilized because of their inability to understand and to participate in verbal communication is very well described in this book. One of the, one of the important points that Barbara makes in this book is that without hearing, and there are times when the hearing aid's gonna be off or the cochlear implant is off at, at night, um, you can't overhear. And one of the points that Barbara emphasizes is that uh, overhearing is, the, is, the, is a driver of social norms. You really learn about social nor norms by overhearing things. Things that are not, speech that is not intended for you to hear, but you overhear it. And, uh, and people that are deaf, they're either uh, in the oral tradition, they're reading lips, they can't overhear, uh, and people with uh, inadequate um, uh, uh, um, hearing aids or hearing assistance are also have a hard time with overhearing. So it's the bottom line is that hearing is all about participating in the social life um, that we humans need and and uh, we we need. And so without hearing, the the social implications are are very uh, dire. With that, I'm going to give you an overview as to how we're going to look at the hearing system. <music>